Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Marketing Matters. I'm Sarah Touchstone, Landmark Titles Social Media Marketing Strategist and Educator, bringing you the best in the real estate biz out here in Phoenix, Arizona, and the metro area of Arizona. Today, we are joined with Felipe Reyes of AZ and Associates, and he specializes in working with investors. Yes, in real estate, when we hear the word investors, we all get excited. This is like the creme de la creme of clientele out there, but there's a lot that goes into it besides having investors that have very deep pockets and can do whatever it is that we imagine they are able to do. So Felipe is an expert. He's with Asian Associates, and he is going to come talk to us today about exactly what it takes to work with investors. So Felipe, thanks for coming on today. Thanks for having me, guys. And no, I uh, appreciate the invitation, first and foremost. And I appreciate everything that Landmark does for us. Uh, Landmark is our trusted partner when it comes to even working with investors. So they know exactly how to handle each situation and grateful for your guys' services. Thank you so much. Thank you for that nice shout out. Very rarely do our, do our uh, you know, our real estate partners come on and like we give them the intro <laughs> and the shout out. So thank you. Thank you very much for uh, for doing the same for us, Felipe. It's great no, having you on. Absolutely. So I've done Q&As a couple of different ways on this platform. Sometimes I'll have them on screen, but I think that it's better. Honestly, nobody cares about once the question is asked. I think they like seeing us on screen better. So we're going to dive in there. Question number one, Felipe, how did you get involved with investors? So first investor I actually picked up and guys, I transitioned from a full-time position just two years ago, like a week ago, two years ago. So I've been in the industry for about five years. <laughs> so I've been in the industry for five years. I was trying to do both simultaneously, guys. And it's it's difficult uh, if you really want to take this seriously. Pivoting and making that, uh, tr that move, it, it's instrumental to your growth in this industry, right? Because now instead of spending nine, 10 hours um, working at a um, nine to five job, now you have the opportunity to invest into education. So education was first and foremost the most important thing, right? developing what the terms are, what a real estate investment um, trust looks like, who to reach out to. So first investor really came from a, a sign, a listing. Uh, this was just after I transitioned from uh, working at part-time to going full-time. I had a couple listings in that specific area where this investor was, and it was a fix and flipper. And I think one of the biggest things that we take, um, that there's a misconception in who an investor is, right? We expect an investor to look like a guy who has a suit and tie driving a BMW, Mercedes. And guys, sometimes it's the guy with the pickup truck who can go and purchase 100 homes that you're looking to, to sell. So um, this was uh, the Becerra family. Um, they manage and flip a lot of properties throughout the family. And they had been working with a family member. The family member didn't, didn't answer. And all they asked was for a quick little appointment, walk through to the flip that they were doing in that specific area. They said, we want to work with you. Um, the biggest thing is just answer our call or tell us you'll give us a call back. Nice. So, yeah. So far from then on, we've picked up uh, 21 different investors that we work with and potentially are going to start working with. So potentially in the magnitude of just building relationships and little by little, just fostering and seeing how we can bring value to their business. Awesome. Well, yeah. Answer your phone, guys. Sometimes it's <laughs> as simple as that. Yes. Be available. What are some of the other ways that are common for realtors to start working with investors? Uh, really just beginning the conversation with your title companies, your lenders, and seeing uh, what investors they know. First and foremost, I think that gives you an idea of where to potentially look and find for investors. And then eventually uh, remembering that investors tend to recuperate a little bit more with someone that they can identify with. So in the year, the last two years, I've transitioned even my model, my philosophies into investing as well. So I also became an investor. I have multiple properties. We have rental properties, not only in Arizona and California, 
and we're trying to expand into other markets. So those are things that you kind of that work in your favor because you start learning what to identify and what's a good deal. And everyone's um, everyone's portfolios and even things that they're looking for are completely different. So the bigger that list becomes, the more you start identifying like, hey, this is a perfect one for the Rogers or this is a perfect one for the Becerra's, the Rodriguez and so on and so forth. Nice, nice. What systems do you use to solicit investors and how much does it cost? Because you said you have 21 investors that you work with. So, so far we use a system that's called Sierra to just send them an update. That's what we're triggering them with updates. Uh, every week we're sending them a, what it's a, just an email recap of what the market looks like, right? So what I do is a ton of social media marketing and a lot of videos. So I do create a template every single week kind of breaking down what's going on the residential side. So most of mine are on the residential side, just because commercial isn't something that our brokerage supports yet. I don't know if that's going to be a transition, but I definitely want to get into that space. But yeah, it's uh, been residential and we give them a breakdown of what's going on throughout the valley. I'm not an expert in, let's say, Utah or Vegas or throughout the valley or outside the valley. I'm an expert in the valley. Nice. Nice. Um, what is the conversion rate? when you're working with investors? Uh, I would say before the last couple of months, it was like a thousand percent, right? Like they they weren't backing out. Now it really is uh, something that genuinely has to be a great deal. Now they're a little bit more picky, but there's a lot more product out there for them to be able to, to pick the best deals up. Right. Oh man, the last couple of years, the investors were all over everything. Absolutely. I mean, it literally got to the point where, you know, your average home buyer just just didn't stand a chance against it, it's the brutal. investors. It, it's brutal because we have both sides, right? We represent uh, normal buyers as well and breaking down exactly what's going on to them. Uh, it, it was it was tough. It was definitely tough. We had investors that genuinely wanted properties and they were willing to put $50,000 earnest deposit non-refundable. And at that point, it's like, okay, well, this is going to convert because they don't want to lose the 50000 Yes, yes. High, high. But yeah, there is a lot more. There's a lot more inventory out there. Um, and, um, you know, investors, they don't, you know, the, it feels like they slowed down a little bit, but they don't have to play the hardball anymore. You know, there's just, there's more to go around, Absolutely. which is kind of nice. Are you still seeing um, a lot of invest, especially with interest rates rising? Are you still seeing a lot of movement with investors? Um, because a lot of them come in with cash in hand or have they slowed down a little bit too? They've definitely slowed down or changed their parameters, right? Before, uh, I would say before June, they would be purchasing something maybe as old as 1970, 1965. So you knew exactly who to throw even properties that weren't maybe moving the way you wanted to immediately over to them because it fit their profile. Now, their profiles have changed. I would say they're looking for nothing older than 1990 now. Uh, they don't want to pass anything maybe above 450000 throughout the Valley. There's a couple that will go over that, but it's just specific areas and knowing, I guess, exactly what they're looking for. But uh, yeah, they're, they're, it's been, it's slowed down on their end as well. Nice. It's interesting to hear that shift in what they're looking for. Oh, absolutely. It was, <laughs> they were taking whatever they could. And then now they're, okay, we can pick things that make a little bit more sense. Plumbing is newer. Electrical is newer. Uh, things that they maybe cost them eight to 10, 15,000 to repair. Now it's avoided because everything's more up to code, up to date. Nice, nice. Well, this is a great question. This next one, because you work with so many investors. How do they feel about you working with other investors? Are some of them a little touchy about it? Or are, you know, most of them are like, yes, you're my guy. Uh, you'd be you're surprised. Everyone. You'd be surprised. I think a lot of them uh, tend to even recommend you. Uh, the first guys recommended us to the next guys that led us to another meeting that met three different guys and gals that are in the industry. So um, obviously, the, once you, let's say, get a listing or something that's um, like a pocket listing, then yeah, I can get a little touchy with who you're going to send it to. And But it, it 
it honestly, you start breaking down the profiles. The profiles are completely different. There's some people that are absolutely only looking for multifamily. The transition to single family was big the last two years. Um, so it, it, I think the profiles also like distinguish between the 21 that we're working with right now. But um, little by little, you just start dissecting and seeing, okay, these three are kind of the same profile. Those five are this kind of profile. And then you kind of know what to present to them. Uh, we try to send something over every single day. Um, which is something that's worked out in our favor um, when things were a little bit hotter. But now, I mean, they're, they're like I'm saying, a, a little bit more picky than usual. Yeah, but that's a great way to stay top of mind with all of your investors. Just Absolutely. be able to go every single day something because it's real estate it's a big city you know absolutely there is, there is going to be new inventory every day especially right now absolutely i mean there's some investors that literally just want new builds and if there's a way to trigger a new build deal i mean that's their bread and butter because it's a brand new property they can close it's cash and it's just working with the builders at that point so there's a lot of different strategies. Sorry about that. No, no, you're good. You're good. How do you kind of cultivate the referrals from other investors? Um, it sounds like a lot of times if they're happy with your services, then the referrals are pretty forthcoming. But ones that maybe are not, like you know they're really well connected and you'd love an introduction. How do you kind of cultivate that referral type culture? Uh, it's... I guess you really have to do your homework, right? You have to sit on LinkedIn, see who the acquisition managers are, who these bigger players are, and see if you can um, get a meal with them and see exactly what they're looking for and how you can bring value to what they're doing. Um, bigger players, uh, the bigger real estate investment trusts already have most of the time teams that they work with specifically because they've identified that's a high producing team. More than likely, they're probably going to get better numbers with that specific person, but it never hurts. It never hurts. The more your business starts growing, the more you start becoming that bigger fish in that big sea. Nice. Very nice. So when you are looking for the properties for your investors, how do you find the particular ones that meet their needs and their goals? Uh, so we have like an automated system via Sierra. And that helps us really kind of break down to the T exactly what our investors are really kind of looking for. And that's what gets triggered over to them. So it's very automated. Um, and that's just more, again, to stay in front of the situation. Um, we do also get deals nonstop throughout the day from other wholesalers and other people in different industries that allow us to, again, be first to the punch to send that over to some of these investors as well, because they it's the relationship thing more than anything. Um, the more that you can assure that you're going to close on a deal, the more that people are going to present the deal that you're pretty much looking for, where they kind of start figuring out the profile of the person that you've already represented. Nice. Um, well, we've got one from our question and answer window. I'm going to go ahead and work in. Uh, do you think investors are starting to panic due to the current market? What are you seeing out there? When it comes to lending, I've seen it a little bit more uh, recent than ever. I, I, being an investor myself, working with hard money lenders, you tend to see uh, what their characteristics start looking like, right? You um, start figuring out, okay, the guy who used to take 10% down is now asking for 15% down. Mm -hmm. um, his rate went from 12% to 13% or from 10% to 12%. So on the uh, lending side, just like we're seeing on the traditional lending side, even the private money side is, is tightening up a little bit. Um, but I think a lot of investors are looking for opportunity. Right now, it's going to be, aside from a correction just in the real estate market, I think it's also a correction in agents. So what I mean by that is that even the best agents are going to find ways to get through and find deals for some of these investors and some of these uh, different players out there. Yeah, so not too much panic. They, they're they still feeling pretty confident. Absolutely. They're still, I mean, they've got, they've got you, right? So you should be confident, right? Uh, how do you do risk assessments for the investors? So the due diligence, right? Due diligence is big and you really have to know your market trends and see what's going on. So uh, that's those things of just studying. It goes back to studying, studying what's going on. Um, and it's funny because that was one of those things when I was transitioning to working with some investors, 
I, I swore I would never do a zero day inspection or waive the inspection. Um, but then I learned from some of these flippers, especially they would do their inspection that day when we went to go see the property. So they're out there, they're contractors, they've worked enough properties to know, okay, this is 15,000, that's 10,000, 5,000, 6,000 faucets are working, water's working, electrical's up to date. So they could pretty much know what their breakdown was even before sending the offer. And at that point, they felt a thousand percent sure if they're putting a non-refundable earnest deposit down. So it's uh, it's really, I, I think it goes back to just experience, experience. You start learning more and more from each and every single person that now I start applying that to my own investments. Um, when I see something I, I potentially like, I'll pretty much do a, an inspection there and uh, be able to compete even with my investors because there's investors absolutely everywhere. Yes, yes, there are. And I think that's why it's such a hot topic for so many realtors right now is because they are literally everywhere, yeah. but a lot of them just don't know what the, you know, the next step is to reaching out to work with them. Um, I think we talked about this one earlier. Um, what is your niche within the investment community? So it's residential. Um, would love to be in commercial one day, but residential is our is what we focus on more than anything because we're in that space. We also invest in that space. We know that space very well. Um, and also understanding, I guess, what rentals go for in specific areas because there's certain investors that literally will potentially be looking something more turnkey and just put it back on some market to rent and they'll be holding on to the property for the next 30 years of, or whatever term that that loan looks like that works in their favor. Um, but going back to what you were mentioning, where to find some of these people is literally some of these meetups that title companies do, lending companies do. I know, um, uh, who are those guys? Cap Capital One Fund does like a monthly meetup in Scottsdale and there's a ton of new investors or new flippers trying to get into that area and introducing yourself bring and breaking bread and figuring out uh, how you can again potentially serve what they're looking for awesome what is a typical commission usually look like when you're working with investors so that's uh, one of those things that kind of fluctuates between each and every single investor um, I can be completely transparent one of our uh, most commonly worked with client will potentially do a 2% listing side, but we still recommend doing a 3% on the buying side when we're listing their property. Um, and on the buying side, really, there I haven't seen too many negotiate. I've seen a couple where they want potentially a referral or it comes from someone else or so on and so forth. So something's divvied up. But when it comes to a, uh, a listing, we'll, we'll lower RN in order to assure that that business is coming. And then we also hook them, right? And what I mean by that is I come from a background of also being able to video produce. Um, so I, I know some videographers that will start maybe a project. Let's say we get a brand new fix and flip. Um, they're probably not focused on getting any material before that, right? But I offer this service completely free. We handle it on our end. I pay the videographer the $500. Hey, next three to four weeks, go out there, just spend an hour there, get as much content as possible. We break down a whole video for them. And then even doing those tiny little things, especially for the local uh, fix and flippers, that's big because no one's ever done that for them. Mm -hmm. So we try to figure out different ways to keep that referral system going. Nice. We've got a couple of questions coming in from our Q&A window. What are investors looking for when buying a home? Are they trying to rent temporarily, then sell, or are they trying to buy and hold for their portfolio? Uh, I think you get a mix of both. Um, there are some that will keep the property and God knows how long they're going to keep that property, which is a scary thing to really think about. Like if they continuously take a bunch of properties throughout the valley, then we get stuck as renters, right? Um, but then there's also a lot that are just fixing and flipping, which is an ecosystem that's necessary to give the next buyer something more move-in ready as well. Yeah, absolutely. We've got another question um, from a realtor on here that is interested in getting into investments themselves, but it can be a little overwhelming knowing the ins and outs. 
how would you recommend um, a realtor get started, not only just learning about investments, but then diving in and making them themselves? So just, I guess, finding exactly what that specific person is looking to do. Um, my first, let's say, project came from a property that I thought I was going to live in. And once I got into this property, I was like, you know what, I'm actually going to flip this because the numbers are just making a ton of sense. And this is uh, early, or late 2020. And within three months, I became a fix and flipper. Um, I had properties that we had just as rentals, but I was like, you know what, I want to try this. And then you start figuring out the the tax repercussions with for uh, fixing and flipping and figuring out, okay, it might make sense to begin a 1031 exchange and so on and so forth. But you got to uh, just do research. Research is big, um, but application is the way where you learn from your research and really uh, seeing whether or not this is an industry worth getting into because it, it is one of those that sounds a lot easier than it actually is. Um, aligning yourself up with contractors as well is big and big in bringing out a list of different people that um, that might serve as a um, a great referral portal for, for your clients is also something that has helped me tremendously. So if my clients need a window guy, I have guys who can build custom windows. I have guys who can just go install windows and building that out will help you as a fix and flipper or trying to create uh, investments and also bring a, an added tool to um, maybe those new people that are hopping into that industry as well. Absolutely, yes. Being a connector in this industry is probably one of our most valuable assets. Knowing somebody that can do what you need or knowing, you know, being the source of the source is, is very, very, um, it's very valuable. Um, and I think too, Felipe, I think, you know, finding a mentor or a coach, um, you know, having the ability to work with the investors, sometimes you get the opportunity to, see what they did and know what the do's and the do nots are Absolutely. in this industry. So I think that goes back to just aligning yourself with the right people um, and getting that firsthand experience because real estate's a, treat, a trade. You don't know what you don't know. And you kind of have to learn on the job in so many aspects in this industry. Absolutely. I always say it's an onion. There's so many layers to it and you'll never get to the core. So many layers. All right. The last question for me. And of course, guys, if you have questions, please chime in. Um, we're like I said, I'm wrapping up to my last one. But if you guys have any more, now is the time. Get them in. Mm -hmm. um, my last question is, what's the best piece of investment advice that you have personally received? at the end of the day, after 30 years, there's going to be appreciation. And that's just proven history. Um, even for those who purchased in 2008 at the peak or 2007, at this point, that home is worth more than what they purchased it at. And anyone making an investment at the end of the day, it's going to appreciate. There's going to be value and you need to live somewhere. Um, so it, it's starting, it's starting more than anything. Um, that That's, and it goes back to even my father-in-law, he's a realtor as well. And he breaks down a ton of these investments he made in Venice a long time ago where there were $80,000. No one wanted to live in Venice, California in the eighties because it was considered a ghetto. And now each one of those properties are over $2 million. That's Granted, are we gonna see that type of appreciation here in the Valley? I don't know, so many different investments going on when it comes to uh, commercial development outside. I mean, if you guys are familiar with the West Valley, the 303 has seen so many warehouses, so many businesses. Uh, you get to the end of the 303 where the 17 connects, you have the semiconductor plant going on for that Taiwan company. Um, th there's just a lot of development. So the Valley is very promising. And I think uh, another thing that some people... Um, might not consider being valuable is really sitting in on planning and development meetings for each and every city. Mm -hmm. um, be a expert in your specific city and you'll start seeing business thrive because people see you as a connecting point. Um, another thing that works a ton is social media. Uh, social media works tremendously and all, all this information that you're taking in, you can transmit and 
add your own flair to it that really helps even get the next investors going to you. Wow, the great advice right there, Felipe. Really great. We've got a couple more questions from the Q&A. Michael, of course, he wants to know what the biggest profit you've made on a fix and flip is. So on a fix and flip, we just closed one and that one was 191. Um, there was $20,000 investment and we just knew the area. So it was a great, great, great deal. Um, there wasn't a ton of traffic going specifically in that area because a lot of people don't tend to sell. So that one was really quick. Uh, and that was a three month turnaround. Nice. That's pretty awesome. All right. We've got a few more. Yay. People are participating. <laughs> <laughs> that always makes me excited. Um, do you do any mentoring on getting started with investing? Uh, we've considered it. Uh, we're barely growing our team out. Right now we have two agents, a transaction coordinator and a videographer on staff that is doing a lot of our social media and recording the videos and we're starting to figure out our formula, but that's definitely something that I would love to transition into in the next couple months. Yeah. Find Felipe on social media and follow him. I'm sure the social media will be the first place that we'll know <laughs> if and when that's available, right? Absolutely. Uh, the free group at Instagram or on Facebook, uh, that's FRE group. And then um, Felipe Reyes dot FRE. I'm writing these down as well, guys. <laughs> this is going to be some good stuff. Um, do you use an, AA, an AAR contract to write an offer or do you have a different contract that you use? Uh, that depends on, I guess, the type of deal, right? Um, sometimes we'll get wholesale deals that make sense for investors and they have their own deal already in place and they're just doing a, an assignment. So they assign it over to my potential client that's interested in the property. And if he signs off, it's literally just like a one form kind of thing. Um, so those tend to be a little bit trickier because they're utilizing their own forms. But most of these wholesalers that we've been working with have their own legal teams that get this prepared. That's very similar to the same exact contract that we use. Nice. It's just disclosing that this is a wholesale property more than anything. Yeah. That's always good. Always good to disclose. All right. And I think we've got maybe our last one in, and it's a perfect one for our last question. Felipe, what inspires you daily? Uh, my daughters, my family, more than anything, seeing them when I wake up and when I go to sleep, that's uh, that freedom that this position brings. It's not an easy thing that we all do here, but that type of freedom that it can allow is what inspires me to give the most that I can in absolutely everything that I do. So seeing them and uh, um, it, it's from working a, a job and I come from the hospital sector and I was working at Banner Medical Group uh, running six different uh, practices. It was something that was almost 24 seven. Real estate's no different for us. That's a lot like 24 seven, but it also does give us the ability of breaking out how we use that 24 seven, right? Um, the first couple hours of my day, I'm really not even looking at the phone, but I have the team and we'll have members and that came with uh, over time, right? And experience and being able to, okay, hey, between 7 a.m. to um, 10, 30 a.m., this specific agent is in charge of getting anything. We created, we have a phone system that all our business or anything that might be a referral goes through and we'll have someone uh, reaching out. But um, I, I tend to spend that time with my daughters. We go to the gym, we eat breakfast, and then that's when the day gets going right after that. Awesome. So no regrets at all from going full-time two years ago. No, no. Even, even sometimes we're, when it gets tough, um, I was telling uh, Michael not too long ago that I was getting calls from directors at the hospital uh, in my worst moments in real estate, especially early on when, when I went full time, I would get like, let's say uh, a zero month kind of kind of uh, month. And those are frustrating because God knows what happens in some of these transactions. They just fall through. And then a job offer is being offered and now I'm just sticking to it and I think at the end of the day, it's all going to work out. And if you're good at what you do, you, you tend to get better and everything starts working itself out. 
Awesome. Well, Felipe did put his handles in the chat window. So if you guys would like to go follow him, um, like I said, I wrote them down. I'm going to I would definitely recommend for everybody to get on. Thank you so much. There we go. Um, this was absolutely amazing. I'm going to go through some of the other things that we have from Landmark Title coming up uh later this month and moving on to the next month tomorrow i'm like what day of the week is it today is wednesday tomorrow is thursday we have the 20th annual we serve expo 20 years guys we serve has been doing this this is always a lot of fun we'll be there at booth 59 if you guys were out there last year you will know that we are a little, we're a little extra here at Landmark Title. So you guys will want to come out, visit us. It's from nine to 11 tomorrow. It's always a really, really good time. Um, and then out in the East Valley, Beth is having, you guys might recognize, recognize Deanna Bone. She was on a few weeks ago talking about how she leverages um, state to state agent referrals. So that was an amazing marketing matters, so much so that people out in the East Valley, that's where she is, were asking um, if they could do a longer present, if she could do come in and do a longer presentation. So that's going to be on the 21st next week um, from 11 to 1. So you still have time to get on marketing matters and then go to this if you're in the East Valley. So if you'd like to attend, let us know that's being hosted by Beth. And then next Thursday, is another one in our CE series. So every month in the fall, well, I'd say we do we do a, a fall and a spring series. It's not quite every month. We take a break for the holidays and we take a break for uh, summer. But other than that, we bring you a monthly CE class. So if you come and you get all of these CE classes done, you can get all of your credits done within a year with Landmark Title. This next one is going to be on disclosure. So if you need a disclosure credit, let us know. These are all on Zoom. We'll get you signed up. Um, it's only $10. So they're really, uh, my, uh, Mike and Sally are our instructors, and they are actually really fun. They make it interesting. Um, and then Renee is hosting another CE class uh, the following week on the 27th, this one I do believe is on Zoom as well. Um, and this one's going to be on contract law. So if you'd like to attend this one, this one's from 9 a.m. until noon. And then we've got our Arizona Real Estate Series. It's coming back. We did this before COVID, before the pandemic. This was a great series. So we've got a top producer panel coming on. Uh, to talk about how they are pivoting and thriving because no matter what's going on in the market, top producers are thriving. So if you'd like to come attend, this is a great series. We do it in person. This will be at our new office off Camelback. Let us know. We'll get you signed up for it. And then I'm doing a social media and Instagram class. We had one of these yesterday out in the West Valley. This one is going to be at our Biltmore location, October 4th, from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Um, if you are just kind of, you know, playing around with social media, if you'd like to learn more about how you can actually generate leads from social media, come to this class. And then Patty and Michael will be hosting, I know we're already in October, this is another one for October, an Escrow 101 class. This is going to be Thursday, October 6th from 10 a.m. to 11.30. So if you'd like a little bit more information about escrow and how that works into the real estate business, let us know. This one's going to be at headquarters over in Peoria. And that's it for us, guys. Uh, thank you so much, Felipe, for coming on today. That was a lot of really good information. <laughs> I know that that's going to take, um, you know, a lot of the agents that were on today, I, I just know that they're going to be inspired and they're going to take this information and run with it. So thank you so much for coming on and sharing. And of course, thank you to our business development managers, Beth, Becky, Melinda, Mary, Paddle, Patty, not Paddle, Michelle up in Prescott, 
uh, Michael, Tom, and Renee. You guys are awesome. And of course, thank you to Landmark Title for allowing us to bring you Marketing Matters every Wednesday at 10 a.m. We've got over 90 shows um, that we've done over the, the years. If you would like access to any of them, they can all be found on our YouTube channel at Landmark Title Assurance Agency. Or if you've got a particular topic that you are interested in, reach out to your business development managers and they can send you a link to that particular show. And as always, please think of us on your next contract. We actually have great investor rates at Landmark mm -hmm. Title. Felipe knows all about this. But yes, investor rates are a special thing. So when you're out there working with investors, just know that not only do we do any and all of your escrow and title needs for individual owners, but we do a really great job working with investors as well. We've got seven offices here in the Valley to service you and one in Prescott. And that's it for us today, guys. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. Thanks for coming on. I hope you all have a great day.